welcome back, it's Christina again with The Artist Pod, and today we'll be talking about how to draw an Isabella Tiger Moth. As always, I'm using a Wacom Intos Pro tablet and I'm drawing straight into Photoshop. So, let's get arting. Alright, so here is the Isabella, it, oh, whew, words, sorry, Isabella Tiger Moth. Um, should be pretty straightforward. Um, it's gonna, it's pretty fluffy on its body, and then the wings, being what the wings are, mostly the same color, there's a few black spots sort of intermixed. Um, now because the face and body are going to be a little fluffier, um, we're going to draw it kind of like fur, right, where you have one line in between the others, right, kind of going in the direction that fur would go. So we have the head, right, pulling that back in, right where the eye is, and then it sort of loops the other way, and having this come a little bit more straighter down. But just one stroke in front of the other. There's a, a ledge here, so what can be really effective when you're trying to um, draw something out is to stop the strokes, and then, you know, it'll look like an edge once you add more in. So same thing up here, right? We're gonna have the strokes, one stroke in between the other, kind of long, I don't know, hair for going into slightly shorter. So we have this nice long hair. We're gonna turn it as we bring it over to the side. Right, but one stroke in between the other. You can see I'm stopping at that edge like we did up there. And you can kind of see, if I take that off, what that does. You can clearly see there's a line because we haven't mixed up the strokes like we have, you know, elsewhere. Even though we haven't even added shadows and highlights yet, we can kind of already see it, which is great. All right, you know, bringing it over, he's got this nice fluff. Nice big fluffy, fluffy moth. The shorter the hair or fur, the shorter the strokes. Longer they are, the longer the strokes. Try to match it to the fur length or the feather length or the hair length or whatever it is you're drawing. I always try to match it. And then it's got some uh, angling to it as well. And you know, it's important to make sure you avoid line conflicts too. So, um, you know, if you, you draw something and I almost re-angled it, that's what I started to do. And then I realized I would create a line conflict if I did it. It's partly what this step is supposed to help me avoid. If I can sort out the direction of the strokes prior to putting full pin pressure, I can hopefully um, avoid any line conflicts I might accidentally create. And then here, uh, a little shorter. Just bringing it down though. Pretty straightforward. Still kind of longish. They're they're pretty like fluffy when you look at them. Their bodies are at least. Just pull it on down. That's pretty straightforward. Don't mind that we have an edge here that changes the fur direction because there kind of is. There's this fluffy section going into a less fluffy area. Right. And, um, I'm a big proponent of always pulling back and seeing what you got. And that's how it's looking so far. Not bad, although this guy's looking a little out of place. We're gonna give him a buddy. Okay. 
Then we go back into really fluffy fur again. I don't know if it's fur or hair. Sometimes when I'm drawing things, I'm like, gosh, I feel like my understanding of anatomy is much more limited than it should be. Whatever it is, the fluffiness, we're drawing fluff. And here it's long fluff. And then the body. So we're just going to bring the same color all the way down. But he's got some, uh, some black. That's what this is. Right, so just bringing this down. Again, you can see I've stopped the lines where the edges are. When I do highlights and shadows, this is overlapping on top of that. So we'll indicate that with highlights and shadows. It makes it easier to kind of see. And just bringing this on down. And because of the nature of the fur, you don't have to be perfectly straight on these black dots. Um, when you look at it, you can kind of see that um, the black dots are uh, you know, the, the, this orangish brownish fur kind of overlaps them. Especially because it's all kind of going in the direction we're drawing it. Because that's the other important thing to note about drawing hair or fur. Is you always draw it in the direction it's growing. So, um, with that in mind, right, like, there'd be some overlapping as it comes down. But, because it's a little fuzzy, like we don't have to be perfectly straight on the edges either, and that also makes it nice where you don't have to have this nice, like, clean edge. You can have a little bit of a messy edge because of the nature of fur, and that's kind of expected. Um, with animals with fur and stuff, you know, if you don't have a messy edge, it can look a little out of place. Still being careful, right? I don't want some crazy errant strand going all the way through it, but... A little bit more freedom makes it a little easier. Just bringing it down. And then, right, it'll come straight down in that middle. And then we'll kind of angle it just a bit on the sides. Makes that a little easier to keep the edges a little straighter. Again, it's not the biggest deal in the world if they're not, but as we put full pin pressure, All right, so if we pop that off, that's what we got so far. You can clearly see the black. You can actually clearly see the little humps, right? Because of the, the change, you can see that edge up here. You can see where all this big fluff transitions into shorter, into longer, and then into the, the main part of the body. So that's great. It's exactly what we want. Now the wings, I'm gonna go with this color. I've debated, that's actually why I have a whole bunch of different colors here. Draw the wings out. We are going to, you know, here we don't have to worry. There's no fur, right? So I can make long, much longer strokes. Um, just sort of, they have to be cleaner <laughs> because, well, the nature of wings. For now, we're just laying it in place, making sure to leave gaps where we've drawn in this black. But otherwise, still putting one in between the other. That helps to layer it up nicely. And then we'll really get into, um, you know, the highlights and shadows will really dictate a lot for us. I do add more lines typically when I'm circling around something that is like a void, like black like this, because we won't be filling in the black. We'll allow the black to stand on its own. Um, I love to do that because I work on a black background um, and drawing in black can be tricky when, you know, you have to use gray and hope that it looks black. So allowing the black background to be the black is perfect. Can't always do it because sometimes there's too much information that we need in that black. But when you can do it, it's great. All right, so just bringing this down kind of at that angle, following kind of the veins, just that bit where they kind of angle downward, right? And 
nice and quick and long. And then when we do um, the highlights and shadows, we'll try to get that veining in. Because it'll be shown through highlights and shadows. Well, especially on this one. Sometimes I've seen butterflies, right, where the veins are actually a different color, and that's really interesting. Um, it really makes them stand out, but it's not the case with this guy. His veins are the same color as his wings, so, you know, we will have to use highlights and shadows to indicate where they are. Just as easy to do. Their wings also don't seem as transparent as some animals, so I'm probably not going to make them so translucent. You can see here too, right, like I'm changing the direction that the lines are going from one wing to the other because that, you know, the veins would be going in a different direction. But that means if, again, if I pop off this drawing layer, you can see a clear delineation from this wing to this wing. Because we're just following the direction the veins would go and the veins are always going to kind of pop out towards the, the tip, the edges, you know. Being a little careful, there is some wobble in butterfly wings, and moth wings, I guess since he's not a butterfly. <laughs> the, relevant, the relevant species we're drawing at the moment. And then of course he has the antennas to do. He has, he has antennas that we have to do. He's not gonna do his own antenna. All right, pulling out this way, same thing. How's the other sign? Oops, making that a little messy, but we'll have to fix that. <laughs> Wasn't the best line. It's fine. Same thing though, following those edges in the same way, following the veins down. Nice long strokes and then sort of drawing around the um, uh, areas that are black, little black dots. Uh, I haven't noticed when I, because I, I always research before I draw, I highly recommend it. You know, I, I've learned that when I'm drawing, especially in this style, the quickest way to learn you have no idea what anything looks like is to try and draw it. <laughs> I have learned that I don't think the spots are the same and in the same places on every moth. Um, from what I could tell, they seem to change. They all seem to have black dots on them, but never in the same pattern as any other moth. So I just sort of put them roughly where it seemed there were typically black dots, but not necessarily, you know, we're, we're not necessarily the same. Kind of like with tiger stripes, right? Like we all know what a tiger looks like, but every tiger, their stripes are different. So you can identify individual tigers based on their stripes. I don't know if that's the same with this, but it, I certainly got that impression. Same thing here, bringing it down, following the veining. With that direction change because of the veining, it'll it'll indicate a different line, a different wing. Now there is a little overlapping of the wing. I kind of have that indicated. I'm not sure if I'm gonna fully draw that out or not. If we're just gonna, you know, with the wing not being as translucent as other animals, we might not draw it out. I'm getting a little wobbly. It's fine. Highlights and shadows will hide all of this, or a lot of it. Um, you know, with the highlights and shadows, especially on like, oh, I guess we have a storm coming. Um, and I lost my train of thought. Uh, highlights and shadows on like a butterfly or a moth, their wings are splayed out, right? So I typically put the light source above and in front of, and if I do that, um, which, you know, I'm drawing it, so that's what we're going to do. <laughs> um, then all of this is going to be in highlight because the light source coming, you know, from above into the right means that there's going to be highlight through all of this. There's nothing to really block it. Where you're going to have shadowing is on the body, right? You're going to have some shadowing on the backside and highlight on the front, and then all edges are in shadow. Um, here you might have some shadowing on this side, right? You have kind of this big fluff coming in. But for the wings, not really going to have to worry about it as much. And then I'm going to add in the antennas real fast. And then we'll get into the highlights and shadows. That was a little sloppy, but that's fine. 
If you can see, I was really sloppy when I drew these, drew these out. Sometimes, depending on the direction, I have a hard time drawing <laughs> certain directions. I'm right-handed. Um, and so there's wobble, but that's another thing I really love about this style is, you know, you don't have to have a perfectly straight stroke. Um, there can be wobble to the stroke, and that's fine. Um, because of the way this works, it won't really be noticeable. And then I tend to save quite a lot, and I recommend everybody do. All right, so I guess we can start with the wings um, for highlights and shadows. I'm going to leave the sketch on. Typically, I don't because I need to figure out the veining, and I need to decide if I'm going to add in an overlap where the wings are connecting. And again, we're going to have the light source coming from above and to the right, um, just like I mentioned. And so there's, there's this overlap. You can kind of see it on my drawing, right? I have this kind of overlap coming down, and you can tell because it's running right into the edge of this wing. So the question is, do I brighten this up? And I might be able to do that and give it some indication without making it look completely translucent. Um, yeah, we'll do it that way. But otherwise, full pin pressure. I'm also, I'm probably going to have some shadowing where the veins are. So instead of like highlighting it, we'll do shadow there and have highlight around it. And not full shadow, so um, you know, I could do like full pin pressure and then go back through and add extra pin pressure around the veins, or I can kind of hold off where the veins are and just put full pin pressure around it. So there's several options on how you can do that. All right, so, you know, when we're drawing highlights, it's full pin pressure, uh, unless, you know, you think somewhere there might be a little bit of body blocking over here maybe even a little bit in this transition. Um, I'm going to, at first, just kind of put full print pressure in between all the veining, right? So that's this. Put that full print pressure down. Leave a little bit of room for some veins. And then this is some doubling up here. Might be easier to um, do it a little differently, but we'll see how it turns out. Right, so this line, that's not veining, that's where the other wing is. <laughs> well, there is some veining here, right in here. But otherwise, just that full pin pressure. And, you know, that first step where we were sketching it out, it's going to help us sort of make quick headway here. Because now I don't have to think about um, the direction the lines are going. I've already determined that. That makes it so much easier. It's basically one less thing to think about, especially when you're adding shadows and highlights um, and there's a lot of intricate stuff happening. I find it easier to not have to worry, you know, about exactly where my lines are going to be going while I'm adding shadows and highlights. It's just basically one less worry for me. And then being careful around these little black dots and to the edge of the wing. Especially with the veins right there. Right, and you often have kind of veining going in a lot of different directions. You can kind of see that 
a little bit planned out here. We have veins coming up, cutting across, coming back down. And then, you know, we'll add um, some lines into it, right? So, you know, all of these veins, I'm going to add a little bit of shadowing onto them. Or, uh, uh, not shadowing, like uh, colors onto them. Definitely shadowing, because I'm not putting full pin pressure for that. And then if I need to, I can always bolster up uh, the color around it. You know, if I think this doesn't really show it well enough. But, you know, drawing around the veining, that's not really that hard. The hardest part of this is really drawing around the black dots. That's where you have to sort of rein in your strokes the most. Um, and that's really not that, that hard. Relatively easy to do. Malls, butterflies, they're, they're pretty easy. They all kind of have the same, um, you know, flow to them. I don't know that that's the right word. Um, drawing out wings and stuff, you know, gets it's pretty easy especially the more you do it but it doesn't take much like a couple of times doing it and it just it becomes exponentially easier there's not much to it all right all right so if we take that off and then I take this light pin pressure and draw here and then yeah there's a black dot here but I don't want to get that impression that these are black dots right they're not they're veins I don't think that's a black dot all the way on all the veins and then, you know, you can kind of see it, but if I did want to bolster it up, right, I can make this brighter. And that'll make it even clearer that that's veining. Um, especially around some black dots, right? Really get that impression. So even though I put full pin pressure, you know, adding in more lines always does brighten up something unless it's just a big block of color. So that's always something you can kind of use as a backdrop. You know, if I ever need it, I know I can do it. Just brighten up a section. Because the way we perceive color, it's not just the color we choose, but the colors around it. When we're looking at a color and determining what it is, how bright it is, you know, how it looks. Like, some of that is our own, is the, the color interactions. So if we pull back, you can still see the veining, although now it might be too much. And then, you know, you have the edge. If I want to make this a little brighter where this wing is kind of coming in, I can as well. All of that is an option. And then you have that vein as well. And you just temper it off by adding in a few strokes. Take that bite down. Quite as jarring. I find that happy medium. Again, you know, light pen pressure when I'm doing that, really holding back. 
not like barely drawing, but the lighter it is, the more control you're going to have. And so there you can see the veining, but it doesn't necessarily look out of place. It just looks like veins, which is kind of what you want. All right. Now, same thing with this guy down here. It's got the veining as well, so we'll go in between. And then, of course, a couple of black dots. Full pin pressure. You don't want any weird, right? Like I don't want a jagged edge here. I'm sure all that looks good. Now as we bring it closer, it might have a little, well, because we brighten it up right where it was connecting in, we might not do that. And at the edge, you can see that I kind of stopped the veining. It would, depends on the animal as to whether or not you can see it go all the way to the edge. Their veins were already kind of partially blend in, blending in with the wing anyway. Um, in some cases, you know, you might be able to see it, but I don't think this is the case for these guys. The wing comes up over the body. So there would be some shadowing against the body where the wing is once we get there. All right, so cleaning up any edges around where a dot is. Their dots aren't the neatest, but you know. Um, I'm going to give it a little burst between these veins we've drawn in, anticipating that I'm about to brighten them up too. Same thing we did with the other one, right? Just lightly drawing in on that vein, lightening up the extremeness of it. That's one half of it. Now up in here, probably going to have this over it. But down, once you get down into this section, right, this is where the wing is actually coming up and over. In this area, they're kind of on the same plane, this bigger, longer, fluffier area, down into this part of the body that the wing would be over.
And then we just have, you know, the other side to do. Same thing up in here. This would be nice full pin pressure because this wing is going to be um, nice and high. Fixing the edge, the bad uh, edge I did when I drew it as well. Making sure that's a cleaner edge. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you know, a little bit straighter would be nice. All right. Now, same thing, full pin pressure. All the way to the tip because their wings are flat. Around the, the black where I'm leaving the veinings, the, ve the veinings, the veins kind of in place. And if I go too far, you can go, I mentioned you can have a little bit of wobble, but if I come off too far, I'm going to backtrack that, right? I don't want the wing to look completely ridiculous if I come too far off the edge, right? A little bit, a little bit of this variation, that's fine. But if I come like out, oh, well, that's not as fine. Their wings wouldn't do that. It's always with sh uh, shadows and highlights that the magic happens in an image. That's when it's going to start looking like whatever it is you're trying to draw. This isn't veining. That's the wing, that bottom wing coming in here. And once we get the wings done, the body will be pretty, pretty quick and easy. We'll be done with the moth. Like before, we're going to brighten it up. Then I'm going to brighten up this section definitively. We have that overlap. Can brighten up right in between that in the between the veins get it on par with the other side so now we have the additional concern of making sure that we don't make one side disproportionately brighter than the other 
They should roughly be the same brightness. Doesn't have to be perfect. But like if one looks like some gleaming beacon and the other doesn't, then you might have done something wrong. Sometimes I hit the button on the side of my stylus. I do not mean to. Okay. Now this isn't this is the edge of the wing, so we don't really need that there, but I am gonna leave a little bit of an indication. Right as I mentioned, right? Colors will look as bright as they do based on the colors next to them, not just the color we've chosen. And then light pin pressure to fill in these veins. You can clearly see it. Just need to make sure it looks good with both sides, which it does, right? Like, it doesn't look out of place. One doesn't look more or less crazy than the other. And so then we just have that last one to do. Down here, again, you know, right? Like, this is coming up and over um, this area, but probably coming down just a little bit here. I'm gonna give it a little bit of shadowing right against the body. And we'll determine exactly how close, um, once we really start, once I take that sketch layer off. But same thing as always. Sing, song, and dance. Right in between the veins. And then just light pin pressure in between. Right, you clearly get that impression. I think the one on the right actually is a little bit more bright and cohesive, so we're just going to brighten it up just a bit. Top one I think we did a good job, bottom one not as much, so we're just going to fix it. Doesn't take much, you know, we're just going to brighten up the wing that's not as bright.
body. All right, so we have the head. All edges are in shadow. So we're gonna do a little bit of shadowing. I know his eyes over here. But of course, the back side away from the light source is gonna have more shadow. So this side's gonna be in a deeper shadow than the other side. And then I'm just gonna pop on the eyes. So we have to fill those in. And then full pin pressure all the way up to that edge. Before fading back out, you want to temper that in to the shadows we've already put. Right, so shadows are, are less pin pressure, highlights full pin pressure. And then we're going to just like before, right, all edges are in shadow, so this is in shadow because it's rounding down. And then, of course, shadow on the back side. Again, that's holding back my pin pressure. And then shadow on all sides, but less shadow on this side. Just kind of how the body rounds away. Might actually not be the case here because it runs right into the wings, but for now, that's what we're going to do. And probably some shadowing here because it fluffs down just a little bit. Following the direction of the lines we've already drawn. I'm just sort of fixing this transition here so it doesn't look as clean, but that it's still clearly there. Okay, and then continuing my light pin pressure over on this back side. It's going to be much deeper over here. So I'm going to fill in a little bit more than I need to because that'll give me some flexibility on this side too fade it in, um, fade it in or out, fade the highlight like in or out. Okay, and now full pin pressure. And since we've already drawn in the shadow, right, that makes it a little easier for us. Because um, all we have to do is sort of feather it in. Sometimes I'll do that just to save on... You know, when you're you're doing light pin pressure, it's easier to kind of sort things out than you're put when than when you're putting full pin pressure. That was really hard for me to say. Um, and then when you add full pin pressure, you know you don't have to worry about it. I've already done it. 
it's easier to, in this style, it's easier to um, add highlight than it is to take it away. So I try to add shadow first and then to build in from there. Right, okay, so there's the first little like frump of his nice thick hair here. And then we have some more thick hair down in here, all edges in shadow. And it kind of, kind of a different section. We're going to have this in highlight, this in shadow. Right, and it's pushing down into the black, that's fine. It does. And once again, we have that backside to worry about. And then full highlight. And then kind of this in between, I'm going to do a shadow real fast. But this in between um, is going to have some highlighting on it. I'm doing it in shadow to be a little easier. Where it's sunken down a bit, so there's going to be some shadowing in it too. Again, you know, I just find it easier sometimes to layer the shadow up before doing the highlight. Okay, now the highlighting is going to be right all through here. And if I need to temper it, right, if I think the shadow is too much, I can always add light pin pressure to temper out the shadow so it blends a little better together. Nice and easy to do. And then uh, the body, right? So we have, we're going to have a deeper shadow over here, right? We have the wing that's kind of covering it. Of course, on the back side, we're going to have a deeper shadow on this side. And we'll be highlighting where the, um, at the very least, where the uh, black lines are black dots it's not lines and then of course you know right his tip tip of his abdomen tail would be going into shadow because that's also rounding down and away kind of shadowing over here And then all edges are in shadow, even though that would kind of clear it a bit. Okay. Bring this over just a little bit more. It's getting dark. And then full pin pressure. Blending it into the shadow we've already created. So I like to add more shadow than I need to create a nice area that I can blend, right? Because you don't want a jarring transition from highlight to shadow. You want it to kind of blend naturally into it. And here. 
here. circles. Nice and easy. All the way over. And then, you know, some variation. Okay. Now, you know, you can see that this is still a harsh transition, so just light pin pressure, right? More, the more strokes you add, the lighter it'll go to. So you don't need to add um, hard pin pressure, but just adding more strokes will lighten it up, especially once you've already done some shadowing. So I'm just going to add some more strokes in here, lighten it up. And this is why I give myself a nice big runway, so I can taper it in. And I make sure it's nice and bright and consistent and looking good. Want any weird gaps? Alrighty. Now we're gonna do the antenna, um, which is the same color as the wings. It's kind of this, I don't know, cream, cream color. Remember, my sketch was really bad, so this might be a case where I delete the sketch, but. Just gonna kind of come in here, lightly fill that in, same on this side, okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and erase them. And then from here, I can fix it up. You know, it's still wobbly, but now I'm going to make it straighter, hopefully. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight, but probably <laughs> better than what I did. Same thing on this side. Fixing those awkward edges. Making sure that the edges are running into things. Okay. And one side we have a little thicker, so we're going to make this one a little thicker. Um, when you pull back, you can kind of see it, right? This one's still thicker, so I'll see that up even more. You do on one side, do on the other. It's true with like whiskers and antenna. Uh, and the antenna don't have to be aimed the same way, but you know, if one's really thick and one isn't, that'll look out of place. Yeah, I think that's better. Now the last thing um, is the eyes. I'm actually going to switch over to a white for this. I'm not going to draw the eyes. What I'm going to do is add a little flare of highlight to the eyes. I'm going to do that just by adding a few lines. And when I take that away, we should be able to see that there's eyes there. And 
this side is going to be less intense than the right side because it's in the shadow side over here. So this is much lighter pin pressure. Still giving it some hints though. Not fully drawing it in, just indicating it's there. Mm. Doing a little bit more. Alright, so that is how you draw an Isabella Tiger Moth. I hope that was helpful. In the floating nether next to me, I have other videos of art tutorials I have done, and I will see you all soon. Thank you so much. Take care.